Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. High school students who are interested in economics often have two options to choose from, AP Economics or IB Economics. Both programs offer valuable learning experiences, but there are some key differences between them that students should be aware of before making the decision. In this video, we'll cover those differences so that you, the student, can make a more informed decision when deciding the future of your economic studies. With that said, let's get into it. So let's start with AP Economics. AP Economics is developed by the College Board for high school students primarily in the United States and Canada. With that said, completion of this program is by no means limited to these countries. It includes two economics courses, AP Microeconomics and AP Macroeconomics. The program covers basic economic concepts and theories such as supply and demand, market equilibrium, consumer behavior, and production and cost theory, all things that you would cover in a first year economics course in university. IB Economics, on the other hand, is part of the International Baccalaureate or IB Diploma Program, which is a two-year program for high school students all around the world. Their program includes two levels, Standard Level, denoted SL, and Higher Level, which is denoted by HL, and it covers a more comprehensive range of economic concepts and theories than does AP. Now let's take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of both programs. One of the biggest benefits for AP Economics is that it's a shorter program that can be completed in just one year. Students can choose to take either microeconomics or macroeconomics or both, and they take a final exam at the end of the course in May. This can earn them a college credit if they score well. Yes, you heard that correct. You can secure a college or university credit in high school if you get a four or a five on the AP econ tests. However, there's a disadvantage to AP economics and that is that it's not as comprehensive as IB economics. Moreover, it's designed primarily for students in the United States and therefore may not provide as global a perspective as IB economics. One of the benefits of IB economics is that it's part of a larger program that emphasizes a global perspective. It covers a wide range of economic concepts and theories, including international trade and development. It also includes assessments throughout the program, such as internal assessments, essays, and final exams, which can help students develop critical thinking, problem solving, and analytic skills. However, just like the AP program, it has its drawbacks. Most notably, one of the disadvantages of IB economics is that it's a longer and more challenging program. It requires students to take both microeconomics and macroeconomics along with other required courses in language, mathematics, science, and the arts. It also includes an extended essay and a creativity, action, and service, or CAS, component, which can be very time consuming and require a lot of work. So with these differences in mind, how should you, a high school student, decide which program is right for you? It depends on the student's interests and goals. If a student is interested in economics and wants to focus on developing a solid foundation for the subject, then AP Economics may be a good option. It is a shorter program that can provide a basic understanding of economic concepts and theories. However, if a student wants to pursue economics at the higher level and is interested in a more comprehensive and challenging program, IB Economics might be a better fit. Ultimately, the decision should be based on the student's interest goals and academic strengths. So students should be encouraged to talk to their guidance counselor, their economic teacher, or just leave a comment down below and I can discuss this with you to learn more about each program and see which one aligns better with your academic goals. You should consider the level of challenge you're willing to undertake as well as the amount of time and effort you're willing to commit to the program. In the end, both AP Economics and IB Economics can provide you valuable learning experiences and set you on a path to pursuing a career in economics or related fields. It's up to the student to decide which program is the best fit for them. Both are highly esteemed and recognized worldwide as advanced credits and are often used to substitute for college or university introductory economic courses. So whether you choose AP Economics or IB Economics, remember to stay curious, work hard, and have fun learning the fascinating world of economics. If you're already studying economics or plan to and want to get ahead, check out some of the other videos on the channel where we go over all sorts of economic concepts and homework questions. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, let us know by liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and of course, let us know in the comments section what sort of economic concepts you'd like to see us cover in the future. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next.